Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download these in US letter or A4 and they're there to accompany each step of this series to help you. There's a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day when you're actually working through your paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel and please share out the videos. And now we're going to continue with question four of the grade four 2018 paper S. So if you turn with me to page 24, we can have a look at this together. Have a go on this, at this on your own. First of all, it doesn't matter if you go wrong. It's just better to learn that way instead of passively copying it through. And so now, hoping that you've had a go, we'll check through this together. So all of the questions here will be referring back to this little extract. Nice bit of Mendelssohn here. And so we're asked to give the technical names of the two notes in bar 10 marked X and Y. So here and here. We're in E flat major. So before we do that, I'm just going to step out the degrees of the scale here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know that there's a key signature, but we needn't bother. The, the key signature does all the work for us. So in the treble clef, this is a D. And so we know that D is the seventh. And then this is a G. And we can see one, two, three, that's a third. And so now we just need to give these their technical names. So the seventh degree of the scale is called the leading note because it leads to the tonic and then we have the median, that's the third, that's your middle note of your um, triad. There we go. So let's look at the next one. So a bit of general information now. What other key signature ha is um, shares this? Sorry, what other key has the same key signature as E flat major? Dear me, that was harder to say than to answer. Uh, your related key there is C minor, so it's just uh, learning those. And again, if I just show you an easy way of doing all of that research with keys is to quickly, before you start a paper, write down your circle of fifths and. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, there's a link in the cards and also in the description to a video where I explain everything about the circle of fifth and it just helps you to get all your information down so you're not confused and stressed trying to keep thinking of that. Now then, give the bar number that contains all the notes of the tonic triad of E flat major. Now we know that E flat major is the first, sorry, the tonic triad is the first, the third and the fifth. So we're looking for an E, G, B. So let's have a look where we can see all of those. So we've got an E, but nothing else. We've got a B, but nothing else. B, G, but nothing else. G, none of those fit. G, nothing else. We've got an E, a B, and a G. So number seven will answer. Let's see if there's another one. G and B, but no E. E here. Of course, it's E flats and so on, but your key signature deals with that. And then we have a B, G, E, so bar 10 also would be appropriate. None of the others. So either bar 7 or bar, bar 10 will answer that for you. So now we're asked to write as a brief or a double whole note an enharmonic equivalent of the last note of the melody. So the last note of the melody here is a G. Now if we just look at that on the piano keyboard, it's a good reference point. Just sketch one of these out so we can see a G. We could either call that an F double sharp 
or we could call it an A double flat, just making sure that you get the correct octave. So here is our given note G, and so the A double flat would be just above, or the F double sharp would just be a step below. So uh, either one of those would answer that question for you. So that's that question completed and now let's move on to the next part of that question. We're still referring to this little extract here so just still keep this to hand and now let's have a look at the next questions. We're asked to rewrite bar 11 so that it sounds at the same pitch but we need to use alto clef. So let's have a look at bar 11. We're going to be copying this bar out again and we need to put in the alto clef and the key signature. So alto clef is centred around this middle line, which is middle C. So we want B flats, E flats and A flats. Now then, let's look at bar 11. So keeping middle C as our sort of anchor point, we can see that we're on the B above that, a seventh above that. So let's now work that from here. And there's middle C and we want a seventh above, one, three, five, six. Seven, that's the B so we can do that as a dotted minimum, a dotted half note and then if you just look we're just coming down one step next door and so that will bring us to this note here and so that does exactly the same job but now in the alto clef. Now we're asked in this next part to um, continue adding phrases following on from the first phrase that's being given. Now we can start this mathematically but then we may have to make a few sort of um, choices to help us to um, just make sure we put this in the right place because we may have to um, just sort of give a bit of artistic license where the math doesn't quite fit. You can see here we've got one, two, three full bars, we've got an upbeat of one beat, then we've got two beats at the end here, and then we have sort of a rest of no man's land. So we need one, two, three full bars. So here's our upbeat, one, two, three full bars. Now then here, that would be a two beat and then we'd end. However, we've not got a rest, we've got this note here and this note obviously belongs to this previous phrase, the way that it's shared. So that takes over where this rest was. So we're gonna go straight from here to here. Now here's our upbeat for the next phrase. We have one, two, three full bars and then it falls in exactly as it did before with the two beats and the rest in sort of no man's land. So we just have to decide whether this belongs to this phrase or this phrase and you can see we want the one beat upbeat and that belongs to the previous phrase. So you just have to use a little bit of musical intuition as well as the maths. So let's just show that that continues so you can tell that it's definitely one phrase. There we go. That's that done. So then, uh, turn over the page and carry on. So now then we're asked um, how many pairs of tied notes appear in this melody. So let's have a look. Be careful we get tied notes not slurs. That's a slur which is um, smoothly joined together notes of lots of different pitch. Here we have a tied note, note head to next door note head. Adding the time values together, tying them together. So we've got one there. We've got another pair there. Let's have a look. All of that slurs. That's a slur, that's a slur, that's a slur. So we've only actually got those two pairs there. So that's two. Now we are asked to answer this, is it true or false, that Vite is a similar meaning to Allegro. Allegro means fast, so also does Vite, that's true. So just a little bit of revision required for that there. Now some general orchestral questions. Is it true or is it false 
that the timpani produces sounds of indefinite pitch that's untuned percussion well actually that's falls this is the one kind of drum head kind of instrument that is tuned it tends to be tuned to the tonic and dominant uh, there I don't, you wouldn't play complex melodies on it, but nevertheless you can tune it to different um, pitches. Now we're asked to name the highest sounding and the lowest sounding members of the standard orchestral brass family. The highest is the trumpet, and the lowest is the tuba, or I guess you could also say bass tuba. That isn't always present, but that's acceptable as an answer. Now then, underline two instruments from the list below that might be played pizzicato. Pizzicato is a string term where you pluck the strings rather than using the bow. So obviously the double bass is a string instrument, so we could do that. Yep, that can be pizzicato. Bassoon can't because that's a wind instrument, you blow it. Cymbals can't because you, you have to hit those or crash them. Violin is the string instrument, so yes, that can also be played pizzicato. So there we go, that's the end of that question. We'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope this is helpful to you. I hope this is helping you with your studies. These past papers, these practice papers are an excellent revision resource and I do recommend you work through lots of papers before you actually take your exam. I've worked through lots online so you can find them there to help you. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated and share out those videos, please. And please do visit SharonBill.com and have a browse around all of the resource and information that's available there to help you. Thanks for watching. Bye.